Jared asked a question, and he's following up on a question um, from another podcast. I saw on a YouTube clip when someone asked about a boxing workout, you recommended doing pull-ups, presses, and deadlifts three sets of three, three times a week. Yeah, it was just, and remember, sometimes when I answer a question, I'm answering that person's question. That is the hardest thing about having a podcast, and I'll be honest with you, Jared, is that people come in, well, and we know from the analytics that they didn't even watch the whole video. They'll disagree with me about my answer, but I'm answering a question to a person. So when I answer your question, Jared, it's very, it's going to be kind of specific to you. Uh, I do Muay Thai uh, is a form of kickboxing, so I thought this might be good for me too. However, I have questions. Well, of course you do. I'm 38 and I've worked out since I was 16. Lots of different systems and tools and dabble in martial arts over the years. But now I'm getting serious about Muay Thai and would like to do an amateur competition in about a year so I can get ready. So the first thing I want you to think about, you'll be 39 in a year when you do your first competition. So honestly, the most important thing you probably do right now is Muay Thai. Um, I'm surprised you're putting it off for a year. Uh, When I first learned the Olympic lifts, the first day I learned the Olympic lifts, three weeks later I was on a platform at a weightlifting meet. When I first learned the discus, two weeks after I picked it up for the first time, I was at a track meet. I like people to get into the sport as soon as they can but I don't know the martial arts, so I'll I'll ease up. Um, I have a barbell, but only 320 pounds of plates, so you have the standard uh, home bar. Uh, A squat rack, pull-up bar, and a kettlebell king's kettlebell that adjusts from 12 to 32. Uh, I'm no fan of those adjustables, but hey, you got what you got. As well as bench bands, odds and ends. Would kettlebell moves such as swings and clean and press have a place in the program as well? If not, why would you leave them out? Well, you know, the most important thing for you to do is you got to get on the mat and practice your sport. And all the other stuff that I, I'm, I'm giving advice about is just supportive elements. So and what you did on here is you gave me an either or. Can swings and kettle, can kettlebell swings and kettlebell clean and press help you? Well, absolutely they can help you. Can squats, deadlifts, and bench press help you? Well, yeah. Can Olympic lifts help you? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm answering your question as best I can. My answer is get on the mat, get on the mat, get on the mat, get into competitions, get into a smaller competition. You know, ask the people at the gym or wherever you train, the dojo or at the hall or whatever, Ask them to, you know, maybe on a, on a Saturday, let's just invent a contest for me and let me see what I need to work on. Uh, when someone's going to, and you're going to be 39, um, you should have a pretty, and you've been training since 16, you should have a very, you know, base of strength and the techniques. So if you're riffing off the question I, I answered on the, on the other person, um, where I said pull-ups, presses, and deadlifts, three by three, three times a week. My answer would still be, and, and suitcase carries, my answer would still be, that, that's pretty good. Now, because you have more equipment and more uh, stuff, can you do more? Absolutely. Uh, you might even find some value in just the standard uh, easy strength program. You might find a real value in a 12-week thing, like uh, Mike Brown and I put together that uh, kettlebell certification prep program. That might be of great value because if you're not going to compete for a year, you've got a lot of time to get other qualities up. There is something I think magical about the high rep kettlebell snatch that seems to help martial artists. And the reason I say that is that's the feedback I get from them. Um, you, you have to keep your mind, you know, you have to keep your head straight while you do those high rep kettlebell snatches. Uh, last night I had a good conversation uh, with uh, Mike and Minnie Bukowski about why I still think that standard of you in 10 minutes you have to do 200 kettlebell snatches with the 24 and then press the 48 all in a half hour period. Uh, if it, of course if it's me I press the 48 first because uh, that's not a big deal and then do those 200 and people say holy cow that's a lot of kettlebell snatches but that's what Pavel said you shouldn't even look at the book 
return of the kettlebell until you've done those two things. And I stand by it. And of course, the feedback is always this. Well, can I use the 20? Well, that's not the 24. Can I press the 40? Well, that's not the 48. Can I do 105 minutes? Well, that's not two. That's not 210 minutes. So there is a value for you to chase some of these other things long term to achieve your goal. Having said all of that, Jared, if you're preparing for this contest in a year, anything you do in the weight room is good. But the more important thing is what you do on the mat. So just keep that in mind. You can do the workout generator. You can do the easy strength programs. You can chase another program for you know six to 12 weeks. Anything you do in the gym is fine, but your focus should be on the mat.